I usually don't take part in competitions. Mm. Yeah, even when uh, they gave me the award, I openly came out and I said I'm not taking part in this competition. I suggested, <laughs> <laughs> I suggested other people, but at the end of the day, they went and you won. Yeah, but usually I don't apply for competitions. Why? Because um, I do not want someone else to decide what is best for me. Mm -hmm. I do not want somebody to dictate what my story is. And I think this is the same reason I stopped writing for newspapers. Because I do not want my story to be filtered. Mm -hmm. I do not want someone to dictate how the story should look like. Mm -hmm. Because it is my story, I know how it happened, and I know what we should create in that story. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Diary of Brainer podcast and thank you so much each and every one of you for always tuning in to be motivated, to learn and to be educated. Today I have someone who I've been looking for so, so long time to interview and sit down with and speak to, uh, someone I look up to. Uh, she is an award-winning poet and writer, she is an activist, she is the founder of Writer Writing Fellowship, uh, she is a lead chair. It's your welcome to the episode. Thank you, Mom. So, how are you? Good. I usually ask people, like, how are you? Because I, I saw uh, an interview with Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is a Hollywood superstar. He does a lot of movies. And he was interviewed by a journalist. And they asked him, like, how are you? And he looked to the journalist and said that, uh, I'm fine. How about you? And the journalist was like, yeah, I'm fine. And he was like, no, how are you really? The guy was like, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, like, how are you? Uh, <laughs> I um, I can't say I'm tired. <laughs> tired. You're tired too? Yeah, I'm tired too. Yeah, but it's really, you know, sometimes, you know, we get accustomed to this, like, how are you? You ask people, how are you? Even though you don't care. You say, I'm fine, even though you're not I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So. You are an award-winning poet and writer. Uh, you are an activist. You are founder of Rises Writing Fellowship. You on social media. You're doing a lot of stuff. You have almost like uh, thousands of followers, and I can say that you are well known by a lot of people. So who is Alicia without the entitlement? Uh, on the social part, on, on all the aspects. <laughs> All the aspects of life, who is Aditya? Uh, Alit is, um, is, uh, is someone who is um, raised between different uh, identities, someone who is still uh, trying to figure out one face of who she is, be it the issue of intermarriage, be it the issue of where um, I grew up, be it, um, be it finding my own space as well. So I could say I need this a human growing within a conflict of identities. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. And your journey, I believe that in life there's no journey which is uh, smooth and free of obstacles and um, blocks. And I'm sure your, your yeah. journey was never been the same, you know? So yeah. was there any challenges that you faced along your journey? So many challenges. Yeah. Really? Um, it also depends because every time we take a new step in life, there is a different challenge. Mm -hmm. So it depends on, on what challenge and when was it and how. Wow. Yeah. This is amazing. So, like, uh, can you mention one, for instance, like, share with the audience and maybe they can relate to? Because maybe this video is not about me and you, maybe about someone who is outside there, maybe going through the same step. Someone is trying to come up with writing skills and trying to be like a leaf. But of course, like that someone will never see the challenges behind Alicia, you know, and how you come to where you are right now. The, the only thing you can see is that, you know, Alicia is a writer, she's written a lot of books, but the challenges that you face along your journey, you never see, you know. So maybe you can share with them, maybe they can relate to. Uh, I think the usual challenge is when it comes to 
biasness and then the stereotypes attached in the community. If uh, if you're a young person trying to fit in, your time is not yet. Mm -hmm. If you're a woman trying to fit in, uh, you are given so many different names. So for me, I think it's always knowing who you truly are and, and how do you want to fit in. That is what I think a way to overcome that challenge. Wow, this is deep. So like for me, uh, lately I, I, I posted uh, like a cover of my book, I was trying to write a book. So I came across criticism like, yo, you're still young. How can you think of a book? And you're trying to help people out of it, you know, like even though you cannot help yourself, you still you are still at the you know like you're still young and you cannot help yourself, like how can you like and I was like, okay, maybe I have to think of something else. So like have you ever come across this? Because criticisms are different. Maybe this is not the same type of criticisms you face, maybe there's other type you face. Like when it comes to writing, I started writing in primary school. Primary school. And I did not want to even let anyone know my writings. So in high school, that's when my first book was published. And it was not me, it was my teacher and my mom forcing it. <laughs> <laughs> so that publication was not about me. Yeah. It was published, I did not want to ruin I, I saw the book very small for public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my teacher and my surprise, all copies were bought. Wow. Yeah, so. From there, again, I stayed for some time. What I think is, you should have a story. If you have a story to tell, everybody will talk. Of it. Whatever they want to say. This is why I told you earlier on that stereotypes will be there, the bias will be there, be it stereotypes about a child not having an experience. Uh, I also had an incident during the peace process when, because uh, I was on the technical team, and then one of the people in the in the peace agreement told me I'm not even the age of my last one by that time. So, <laughs> yeah, why? Because uh, we were the ones drafting things and uh, we were also trying to do interventions. <laughs> so what I think is um, education has given us a privilege to study, know history, know what is happening. Mm -hmm. Because now news Let's an elder and a young person know almost almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. Reading the same book makes you almost of the same knowledge with an elder or a younger person. Of so course. it's more of are you inform, informing yourself enough in order to be of help to someone else? Are you are you educating yourself enough in order to help someone out of a situation? Are you writing to give someone a solution or are you writing to let someone see themselves in your story? Yeah, so I actually that's what you did, not to say it does not. Well, a part of you, like, what were you saying? There's something that catch my attention, really. That one of, like, some who said that you are not uh, yeah, at age. So, like, what was it, like, about your writing, or...? No, because by that time I was in the technical team to the peace agreement. Which one? Which peace agreement? Uh, the revitalized. Uh, the final one of cartoon? From the one of the artists to the final one of the But I was told that statement of Abdo. Wow. Yeah, it, How old were you like? like uh, that time I think I was uh, 20. 20? Yeah, I was Wow. By the mm. time they were now going to finalize it. Wow. But I think you attacked that guy, that's why I was like, yo. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I actually was going to attack that person. You know, he was suggesting, no, it was when people were talking about the youth representation, the youth representation mm. and so on. So he said, you young people, your time is now to all this stuff. So I told him, uh, the fact that all of us are alive, it's our time to live, and mm. it's our time to decide the kind of future we want. And then there were some suggestions they made, which uh, later on that did not even pass them through, I guess. So I told him I would be very ashamed to tell my children in the future I was part of such a document. Yeah, so, <laughs> so he told me that uh, you know the one that I my last one. Because I told him I would be very ashamed to tell my children I was part of such a document. This is the bitter truth. The bitter yeah. truth. They couldn't take it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this this is amazing. And um, 
like for instance, you you are a writer. You're like industry of writing, and writing is like the other industries, like music industry, like comedy, uh, any other industry, you know. So in such kind of industries, people we can say that people are the kings or the judges because they're the ones there, like yo, how good you are, how bad you are, and and of course people are not the same. Some people are negative, some people are positive, some people are neutral, some people like to drag people down, some people like to uplift people. So like, how do you deal with people? Like, how do you balance between your perception of yourself and the writing and of your writing and how people opinion of you and your writing? How do you balance the two? It's usually a hard situation because sometimes you might write something and it's misunderstood. Mm. Somebody does not get the message you're trying to pass. Yeah, but for my case, uh, I usually don't take part in competitions. Mm. Yeah, even when uh, they gave me the award, I openly came out and I said I'm not taking part in this competition. I suggested, <laughs> <laughs> I suggested other people. But at the end of the day, they went and... You said, won't. Yeah. But usually I don't apply for competitions. Why? Because um, I do not want someone else to decide what is best for me. Mm-hmm. You know? I do not want somebody to dictate what my story is. And I think this is the same reason I stop writing for newspapers. Because I do not want my story to be filtered. I mm-hmm. do not want someone to dictate how the story should look like. Mm-hmm. Because it is my story. I know how it happened, and I know what we should read in that story. No, absolutely, you know, like, you know, because once you're in competition, you feel like you're surrounded by your peers, you know, and it's like there's peer pressure all, all around, you know, because you feel like you have to conform to specific people or community. Because if you write and you're in competition, of course you have to, you know, you have to match their expectation. Like, you have to maybe write what they may like, and how they don't like it, so sometimes it, like it, it, it gets you out of your you know your, your, your own self and your own like the way of writing. You have to match just the like the the, the, the society expectation. Yeah? I think competitions are good because even at the writers writing fellowship we make competitions mm. and every year we try to get three winners. But for my case I always find that uh, my journey is different. Mm. That is one thing, and my self discovery was a, was a different work from someone else. Mm. And and for me, if I am in the journey of trying to find mm. myself and who truly I am, I am not going because I am already having definitions of people that came. So there's a, this quotation that I came across, and I always like to to relate any question of mine. You know. Uh, the quote say that small drops of water form rains and small atoms of sand form mountain. So like uh, what form are it here? Like, what is the mixture of composition of it here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think so many things made me just like the small drops of water. Mm. I think what made me is uh, uh, (laughs) what we believe is uh, is a journey you know because sometimes as a child especially when children grow in polygamous families and Mm. and you're trying to find your position as a child you're trying to find yourself as a child and of course it's always like you know children born in these polygamous families are always like Things thrown in the ocean, mm-hmm. and you know, you're trying to swim in that water and get out. Mm-hmm. So, for me, it's more um, coming out of that ocean, trying to rediscover myself, mm-hmm. you know, getting out of waves that I had been to myself. And then, I think the fact that uh, there's some stereotypes, so mm-hmm. I'm trying to break through. And the need to break through is what makes the Oh, this is this deep. This is so deep. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Peace Travel and Tourism Agency, where they give you and serve you with all the traveling services. They give you ticketing, visa processing, and all the stuff that may help you to travel safely. 
visit Peace Travel Agency at Airport Road opposite Alpha Bank, making travel easy for you. So, um, we have a quick quiz. So, you have to answer only one word. I have five questions. Number one. You ready? Money or fame? Money. Money. <laughs> because with, with money you can be automatically famous. Look at uh, Jairi, she has money. No, if uh, I was a child, no, no, I achieved a lot of things with that money. <laughs> uh, what are you aspiring to? <laughs> like, uh, the money is <laughs> the money she's having, I'm not on it. But anyway, I don't know her businesses, so maybe she's having beyond what the can say. And uh, for me, I, I would have had so much of that money. <laughs> the Jairi is very famous, you know, even some people admire that this. Is... Yeah, that is a hard, but I don't think I want that, you know, I want the money. <laughs> yeah. So, number two. Um, Ali Jong, what do you want <laughs> yeah. How about Gundas <laughs> I, I like both of them, but uh, your, your, your like favorite one. You know, John Frog has a dance hall music that is good, mm. and uh, Lidioma also has uh, I don't know how they call that. Romance. Uh, it's not just romance. You know what I like about Lidioma is sometimes when he's singing, he's singing with passion. Mm. You see the passion in yeah. you know, see someone laughs at this thing. I think Aliyoma is the only person who sang about the genuine passion. Most of the guys, you know, <laughs> somebody singing because they have to get something and they're forcing life on it. But you know, if you listen to, uh, even if you hear a genuine, you will love how to do that song. Yeah, yeah. but you know, I feel Aliyoma sometimes, the guy is the only guy who introduces like the Dika song to a lot of people because a lot of people. The nine thing can be listened to, you know. Because yeah, because of the passion. Yeah, you, you can feel yeah. the voice even. Yeah, because you know he's calm, he's singing with mm. passion. And then for John Frog, he's himself. I like that so much about him. Mm. Yeah, when John Frog is singing, you find that someone is okay with who he is. He's so proud of himself. Mm. He's just doing John Frog. <laughs> yeah. Good to see That's what I like about him. Uh, my favorite song to the front is uh, it's not just going to say it's uh, Action Eye. Action Eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because in that song, your frog is just trying to create his own Arabic, his own English, his mm. own your frog thing. You know? And for the Golosa, that's the reality of our. The, the only thing I like about John Frog is that the guy never fake anything. Uh, yeah. Sometimes he's real. Because Sometimes being real, you educate people. By being real itself, like, you educate people. Because a lot of uh, artists, you see, like, you have to fake them, so like, you're living a life which you don't live, actually. You know? So, in this way, when you fake it, you're not letting people to know. Even though if you reach that top, people are still going to question how you make it, you know? Because, but once you are real, you know, you show the steps, how you start, of course, people are going to fall in love with it. Uh, number three, um, Arwal. Or do the kitchen? <laughs> Arwal Shia or do the kitchen? Uh, Arwal, if it's not, not only because she's my sister, but for me, she's herself. You know, even mm. at home, you cannot find something like that. Mm. You know, she's uh, she's crazy. Mm. That is one thing uh, she doesn't get mad at this. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that she's crazy. And she's so intelligent for her age. Mm. You know, someone who's just 18 and the way she thinks. Mm. You know, sometimes even when I'm in the middle of something and I need someone to talk to, they say mm. and you know the thing she says to me is oh this is not my younger sister. Because she's she's not even my follower, she's my second follower. Mm. Yeah, so if, if she's you know, sometimes I just say oh she, you know she's bright. So mm. even if she lives modeling, I know she can do so much. Mm, she has a lot of potential. Yeah, she does. Like number four, um, with federal system or anti-federal system? Um, no. Nah. I don't know why that thing was not there. <laughs> yeah, 
But sometimes I see like you're involved in politics and uh, which is good. Sometimes people... Uh, um, for me, I think uh, we are not yet even, um, you know, having a system. I want us to first have a system. Just, mm. you know, know that this is, uh, this is a system where, you know, our resources will be managed well. This is a system I can hold someone accountable. Then there, uh, I can talk about uh, a system where the national security is concerned about my health. Mm -hmm. A system where the national security is concerned about the kind of education that the, the schools give me, mm -hmm. not the real national security. So for me, I, I, I need a country and a system first before I decide which kind of system mm -hmm. to later. Yeah. Oh, this is Number four, comedian Zico or comedian Benton Kia? Oh, I don't know anything. You know nothing. Wow, this is. Anyway, we're going to leave this one, but I'm going to ask you another question. Reading or writing? Writing. Writing. Because you're a writer, of course. <laughs> because they say, like, readers are leaders, and, and leaders are readers. And even like some people, like, uh, they're good at writing, but at the same time they write, they, they read, they love to read. Yeah. Mm, uh, for me, it's not a must for me to try reading it. Mm. As long as I've done what's necessary, I feel like this is what I want to see. Mm. It's done. So I might read uh, something fake mm. that can mislead the world, yeah. and I can write how I want to see my world. Uh, in one of your, in one of uh, the episode of uh, Nelson Kwaje uh, podcast, I watched your podcast with Nelson, and there was this question. There was something that you said, you know, it was sensitive and very, very profound. You said that we youth of South Sudan, we are like products of different countries, UK, Kenya, Uganda, and uh, in your case, you've been to Khartoum, Sudan. You've been raised in Uganda too, in here. So like your products of two different countries. And me, I'm also I fall in a in, in a box which they call as Katumas. So I've been in Sudan. So I'm a product of uh, a different country, new th the thoughts of the country which I was raising. So like, how do you see this nature of like most of the youth of the country being products of different countries? Do you see this as uh, uh, an obstacle? that may, may hinder or block the growth of, uh, of the country due to the, to the different thoughts and perspective? Or you see it as a, a way of diversity of thoughts? I think if mismanaged, it is a distraction. If mm. it is managed well, for example, we bring youth from East Africa, mm. youth from the North, youth from the West, wherever they come from, mm. put them together and tell them each which country do we dream to have? Let's say this is what the national security does, or, or um, the president, or the vice presidents come and say, okay, which kind of country do you want? Just write your story, mm -hmm. you know? And then they sit down, they can actually know how to lead the country, if, you know? Because they will pick the good part of it, because at the end of the day, they have policy makers, they have advisors. Mm. You know, these are people who will look through the suggestions of everybody that is suggesting something. And then it will be of help to people who are leading. But if everybody comes with their own idea, and you know, because here everyone's not given a chance, mm. right? So for me, if by mistake I get a chance, you know, a chance in a public office and make sure you see the Kenya in me. You know, or you see <laughs> the, the Kenya in me. Or you see the Uganda in me. But if there was a chance before I get to that public office to serve and was with young people because there's the youth union now. You know, if the president had made use of the youth union to tell him, Okay, every month I want you to make a youth conference of different youth. But the issue is always if they say conference in the same place as everywhere. But let's say each state every month contributes different kind of faces. Mm -hmm. Ten states, yeah. Imagine how many different ideas they would have. How can they be able 
to give, a, give ideas that can contribute. So I think the issue is just mismanagement of the human resource they have, mm. just the way the resources are being mismanaged. Exactly. And you know, sometimes I see this, like, people, or the, the leaders or the big people in the country, maybe they're afraid of, like, uh, of, of, like, young people bringing ideas which are maybe negative or whatever. So sometimes they, they fear the, this thing, you know, the products that they come from, they, they bring from other countries and uh, bring them in sense. So sometimes I see this, like, a fear from the elders, you can say. Uh, I, I think it's just insecurity, it's not fear. Mm. Because most of them say, okay, we have been in the bush, we don't have time to study, mm. and so on. And then I come with my expertise mm. to be under someone. So that person, what, the fact that if I am under you, any achievement I make is for you as the leadership of that department, mm. they don't understand it that way. They see you're coming to overthrow him, and that's it. But they don't understand, okay, even people who own companies or what, some mm -hmm. of them are not that educated. Mm -hmm. But they make sure they get the educated people to run their own business. Or, yeah, or mm -hmm. Someone who has the expertise. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's why that person in that seat, especially our elders mm -hmm. in this country, they don't put in mind that I'm employing this person to work for me. And, and what they do in this department, I as the head will take the credit for it. Mm -hmm. No, they take it personal. You know, right. Until we start having institutions and do things um, and do things in a professional way, mm -hmm. it will not be easy. Someone who only uses some amount of money to survive, mm -hmm. they will become what I want them. They become like robots to me. I infuse in them what I want them to think mm -hmm. about another person. You know, I make them hate who I want them to hate. I make them fight my own war. So for me, I look at tribalism as a weapon, not the issue is of that. Mm -hmm. It's just a weapon being used by people who want to fight wars, and they feel like this is the human resource they need from their own tribe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, I feel it because like our country, uh, I don't know which, which year was this a statistic, but I think they said that 30 percent of the social units and the only guys educated. The, the rest of 70, they are uneducated. So I think this uneducated, like the, 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 the portion which is like uneducated, I think they are, they are being used, you know, by mm -hmm. the, maybe you can say the 30%. Mm -hmm. Some people, mm -hmm. they, are, they are using them for only their agendas, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, but what do you think is like the, maybe the medication or like the way of like uh, defying it? the hate in the South Sudan, or the tribals. I think civic education is one. We get to know, let South Sudanese know that um, I'm going to, if, uh, if somebody gives you money, it, it is not support. Mm -hmm. It is not, uh, it is just, for me, I always look at it, most of the tycoons who pretend to be helping the poor in South Sudan, mm -hmm. and they have positions to be able to change things. I look at it like, you know, somebody entering my mother's kitchen, they're stealing all the meat in the saucepan and then they're giving my hand one not to kill my mother. You know, this is how I look at it. Mm. So if South Sudanese are given the civic education, you know your rights, mm. you know you know how to demand for your rights. You know that uh, this is our resources, you know, this is how we are going to hold people mm. um, accountable, especially if they build us bad roads. Mm. For example, if you look at some roads that like people are celebrating, mm. they're not worth the money we invest. How many barrels of oil go away in the name of building those roads? Mm. So if South Sudan is not their rights, you know, they will know that actually we're supposed to get better than this, than price mm. of what is, you know. And if the South Sudan is, and I see the youth enterprise fund that was there mm. was a way because if you let South Sudan is, at least 20 people have one business done by the government. Mm. They will not need to be dependent on somebody who's going to use them because mm. they are able to survive, they know their rights, and they know what to do for their country as citizens. Mm. So I think civic education and then enterprises is a way to live their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, this awareness, mm. you know, letting people know about their rights and but you cannot let them know their rights when they are hungry. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. 
give them something to survive and then you let them know that. You know, I think the weak point is like the hunger, just to say. Mm. This is the weak point in which they are getting manipulated, used by, you know, the selfish politician or people who only want idea, like positions and... Mm. Before I let you go, I'm going to give you another five question. Uh, it could be one word or a sentence, only one sentence. It should not be more than that. So, number one, what was uh, the best advice you received in your life? The best advice I received in my life mm. was uh, there was an old man, mm. due to the old man is now. He used to drink a lot, mm. you know. But I think in a way he was related to me that was in Sudan. Mm. And uh, you know, whenever he's drunk, he just passes by by our home and then sings for me a song. Mm. It's just a song of three words, you know. And I never asked him for advice. I never. And what does the song say? The three words. How about the this? The the three words he says uh, that a little strength in your heart, you know, depend. That's how they say it in my mm. language. Used to say in my mother tongue. So that is, I think, the only best advice I received. Yeah. Strengthen yourself. <laughs> it's so, yeah. so amazing. The worst advice you've ever received? The worst advice I've ever received. Mm. Um, maybe when I was told uh, yeah, I'm still young to do anything. Yeah, the other guy. Yeah, it was the worst It was horrible, but uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what is uh, happiness to you? Like, How do you define happiness? The own definition of happiness. Um, I don't know when I'm happy and when I'm sad. <laughs> How are you really? Pardon? How are you really? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I usually don't know the difference between the two. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's keep it. So, who is Ali in only one word? Ali? Mm. Living. Living. That's yeah. how you define Ali. Is, and in your language, your language, what does it mean? Ali. Ali. Ali is a bird. In my language. A bird. Yeah. Well, there's similarity even in our language, it's like uh, yeah. a bird. Yeah. You know, yeah. A specific uh, bird. But we call yeah. it. We call it ulit. For yeah. me, yeah. for for female, we call it lit Sometimes. Yeah. Mm. But uh, it's not my family name, mm. so. The ma the first the mother of the first sultan we ever had is the one who was called the mm. So most of the times their beliefs and whatever is attached to it. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's what okay, because in each family, you know, once you have a grandmother or grandfather, they call you yeah, that yeah. you know, the same they name. That yeah. Yeah. They don't want that name to disappear in the family mm. line, you know. Yeah. Alicia, share thank you for being here. So, do you have anything that I didn't like give you the opportunity or chance to say that you want to say to people? Nothing at all. And before I forgot something very important. What is your message for someone who's like trying to be a writer, trying to be uh, an author, and trying to maybe to reach the position you have reached? Like, uh, what is your advice? I uh, would say you know who you truly are. Mm. Um, have your personal choices, mm. you know, make mistakes, and then know your story, have your voice, and find your own space. Wow. Yeah. It's here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for always watching and being all around. Don't forget to subscribe and join the family.